Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're going to look at how to set up uh, Firebase authentication in an Ionic application built with Stencil.js. So I've already uh, created an Ionic PWA using uh, Stencil.js and the Ionic PWA starter kit. Uh, so that's a project I've got up uh, now. So if you don't already have something like that, uh, if you don't have a Stencil project that you uh, can work in already, you should go ahead and create one. Uh, I'll link to some resources for that if you need it. Uh, but what we're going to do first is to set up our Firebase project. So what's useful about Firebase is that it's a database as a backend service. So we can set up things like uh, authentication and using databases uh, really easily because everything is handled uh, through the service and then we just need to interact with it through our application or through our backend, uh, whatever we want to do. So one of the main benefits of using a service like this is that everything's provided for you out of the box. You don't need to implement your own sort of complicated authentication scheme. Uh, the downside of course is you know, it's a paid service and there are some other things to consider as well, but we're not going to get into that uh, in this video. Uh, so what we are going to do right now, uh, as you can see, I already have a project set up uh, in here, uh, but I'm going to walk through the process of creating a new project in Firebase and setting up authentication. So what you're going to do is uh, come to the uh, console.firebase.google.com address up here. And if you have a, a Google account, uh, you should already be logged in and you'll be able to see the screen uh, that I'm looking at here. If not, obviously you're going to need to uh, create an account. Uh, but once you're here, just click on the add project button. And then it's just going to give you some options here. So we'll just call this, uh, call this stencil Firebase example. You can call yours whatever you like. Uh, and then you can see we have locations and stuff here where the servers are going to be. I'm not really going to uh, worry about any of that. Um, we can just accept these conditions here and then click create project. So that's going to create our project for us. And once it's done, we'll jump into uh, implementing the rest of it. Okay, so that's all uh, complete now. It says your new project is ready. So Let's uh, we'll click continue to jump into our dashboard. And in here, you'll see a whole bunch of things. Uh, first of all, notice we're on the Spark plan. So this is free to use up to a certain uh, amount of usage and then you'll need to start paying for it. And if you look over on the left here, you can see authentication at the top, which is what we want to use in this example. Uh, but there's also other things like database storage, hosting functions, uh, which you can all use in your projects as well. Uh, so we're just going to be focusing on authentication uh, for this, but likely in future videos, we'll cover some other things as well. Uh, so before we get into the actual authentication, you can see uh, here it says add an app to get started. Basically what we need to do is connect uh, Firebase to our application. So we're working with a Sensor.js application, which is web-based. So we are going to choose the little web icon here. And if you click on that, uh, it gives you some information on how to configure Firebase in your project. So you can see here it says to include the script tag and then there's a script here to run to configure uh, your application. Uh, since we are using Stencil.js and Ionic and we're using uh, ES6 modules and things like that, uh, we can still use the script tag if we like, uh, but what we're going to do instead is to npm install this into our project. So we get things like uh, type checking and all the sort of import stuff that you're used to using in a typical sort of uh, Ionic application. So what we're going to need to do is just to open up the uh, command prompt here, the terminal, and we are just going to run npm install firebase dash dash save, and that is going to install that into our project. Okay, so that's finished uh, installing now. Uh, so now we can come back into here again and we have the firebase SDK installed into our application, but we still need to configure it. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, copy this and we're going to paste it into our project. So I've already set up an auth service that we're going to make use of here. And I'll talk a little bit through the rest of this in just a second. Uh, if you aren't familiar with using a singleton service like this in your Stencil.js applications, I'll link to a tutorial that I wrote recently that you can uh, check out and just get the general idea behind what's going on here in terms of creating a class and then exporting uh, this service here. Uh, the basic idea is that this is something that we're going to be able to use throughout our application to, to call our authentication functions. So you can see at the top here, we have import Firebase from Firebase app and we're importing Firebase auth as well. So that's coming from our um, 
uh, Firebase SDK that we just npm installed. And now we need to configure it. So inside of our constructor here for the service, uh, we're calling uh, this dot init. And what we're going to do at the top of this method here, we're going to add in our configuration code that we just copied from Firebase. And we'll change that to a const. Uh, we have some spell checking going on, which is a little bit annoying. I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, disable spell checking for the word workspace. You probably won't need to do that. Uh, okay, so we have our API key here, which is going to uh, allow our application to authenticate against our project in Firebase, so it knows it's us. Uh, obviously this API key being in our front end code is going to be uh, public. People are gonna be able to see that. So uh, you have to make sure you, know, you set up the proper security rules and stuff like that, depending on what you're doing in your application. That's not something we're gonna get into in this uh, example. We're just doing some really, really simple uh, authentication here. So obviously this will all be your own information in here that you will have copied from Firebase. Don't copy what I have here. Uh, and then we just call firebase.initialize app and we supply that config. So with that done, it's going to uh, uh, connect our application to our Firebase project. So we're going to come back and look at the rest of this uh, class here in just a moment. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna save that and we're going to jump back into the Firebase project here again, and we're going to set up authentication. So if we come over to the menu over here and we click on the authentication option, we're going to uh, see a screen here. And what we want to do is click on set up a sign in method and then you're going to get a whole range of different ways that you can allow your users to sign in. So a lot of these are OAuth based uh, where we can sign in with Google, Twitter, Facebook, GitHub, where basically they're going to be going to those services and clicking allow uh, in order to sign into your application. Uh, what we're going to do is create an anonymous user. Uh, so what this does basically is let people authenticate without providing any sort of uh, credentials and then they can use your application, they'll have uh, an ID as if they're logged in and we can treat them like a logged in user, uh, but they don't actually have any sort of account. And so this is just an easy thing to use for an example, uh, but it is possible to, uh, to convert these anonymous accounts into uh, full accounts later if you want to. So what we're going to do is just click the little edit button. Uh, it says enable an anonymous guest account in your application, uh, which lets you enforce user specific security and Firebase rules without requiring, uh, requiring credentials from your users. So we'll just enable that and hit save. And then that's going to allow us to run that anonymous uh, authentication method. So with that set up here, that's all we need to do in the Firebase project. So now we can jump back into our code. And now let's just quickly talk through what is happening here. So inside of our class here, we've set up a user here, which is of the type Firebase user, which is what Firebase is going to return to us when a user authenticates. We have the initialization going on here. And after we have initialized, we call firebase.auth.onauth state changed. And so this is going to run when the user logs in or logs out. And that's going to allow us to set this user uh, appropriately. So that information is going to be available through the service. And then we also have a login anon uh, method here. And what this does basically is call the sign in anonymously uh, method from Firebase auth. And so this is just going to trigger that process that's going to uh, go through that anonymous uh, authentication that we just set up. And basically nothing is gonna happen on the user's end. There's gonna click a button and they're going to be authenticated automatically. And so once that happens, that's going to return uh, the uh, user's information. It's going to, you're going to get an object back with their ID uh, and just a whole bunch of other information, which we're gonna take a look at in just a second and we will just uh, log that out somewhere for now. So what we need to do now that we have this service, which we're exporting, so it's gonna be available through our application. Uh, we're just going to implement a simple uh, login method on our homepage. Uh, we're just gonna trigger this function and we're gonna see what sort of data we get back from Firebase. So I'm just going to jump into the home component and I've already set up a button here and so all we're doing is triggering this dot login on click, which is this function here. And all we do is call the auth service and call the login anon method. 
uh, we wait for that to complete and then we log out the user that gets returned from that. So that's gonna be that user credential information that I just mentioned. So we'll make sure this is all saved and now we're going to run this in the browser and hope that everything works. So to run the project, we'll just run npm run start. That's going to compile and load up in the browser here. Okay, so I have my test login button now, which I'm going to click and cross my fingers. And you can see here, uh, after just a, a second or two, we get a, a new log statement popping up here and we get that user's information. So this is an anonymous user, so there's not going to be a whole lot here. Uh, but if we scroll through here, we can see they have a user ID. There's information about the Firebase project there. Uh, there is profile information in here. You have things like an email display name, uh, email verified and things like that, which if you were using a different authentication method, there would be some uh, data here. Uh, you can also set this information for a uh, for an anonymous user. Uh, but again, not something we're gonna get into in this video. Uh, I just wanted to show a really simple example of using Fire, Firebase authentication with a Stencil JS project, really with just a few lines of code. Uh, it was very easy to configure that in here. And our service here, all we really need to do is after we initialize it, is just make this call to this simple method here and we can authenticate a user and then do whatever we like with that. So as I mentioned, I'll probably do more videos on Firebase, uh, we'll do some Firestore videos, things like that in the future. Uh, but I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you did like it, please do feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.